Last week, we talked about foliage translucency and we added the translucency effect to this bush asset. So let's take a look at the shader that we created. So in this shader, you can see that we added this mask here uh, to mask out which areas are translucent. And then we multiplied it by the diffuse color and passed it into this subsurface pin here. Now, after we did last week's tutorial, I, I started thinking about this map here, um, just kind of hanging out all by itself. And I decided there was a more efficient way of handling this. So in this week's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to pack three textures together in the same channel. We're going to take the opacity mask and the roughness mask and the subsurface scattering mask and put all of them together in one single channel in the alpha channel of the diffuse texture. And this is great because it means that with a single texture sample, we get the diffuse color, we get the opacity, we get the subsurface scattering mask, and we get the roughness, all for one single texture sample. This is gonna be great. Uh, before we do that, there are two things that I wanna show you first. First of all, when we have an asset like this bush, it's made out of a bunch of planes, and the planes are double-sided. So if I select the, uh, the root node here, and we come over to the settings under material, you can see that it's set to two-sided foliage, and I've got this two-sided box checked, meaning the, the polygons are gonna render on both the front and the back. And there is a, a little bit of a special case here for the normals, because on the front side of the polygon, with the normal map applied, the normals are pointing in the correct direction. But on the back side of the polygon with the normal applied, the normals are actually flipped and we need to fix that. And the nice thing is that Unreal provides a node that allows us to do that. It's called the two-sided sign node. And what this node does is if we're looking at the front side of the polygon, it returns one. And if we're looking at the back side of the polygon, it returns a negative one. And so all we have to do to invert our normals is multiply our normal map by our two-sided node. So on the front, the normal map will be multiplied by one, which means it'll do nothing. And on the back, it'll be multiplied by negative one, which means the normal will be inverted. And so I'm just gonna take my normal map output here and add a multiply and I'm gonna multiply my normal map by my two-sided sign node so that I can invert the normal on the back side of the polygons. And we'll save that, and we'll switch back over to our scene and take a look at the result. And one of the really nice things about Unreal is that I can come up here to the lit menu and go under buffer visualizations. And in this case, I'm interested in normals. So let's take a look at the world normal buffer visualization. And this is gonna show us what the normals look like. And since we flipped the normals on the back side, we're able to see that the normals now are facing the correct direction on both the front and the back sides of the polygons. Okay, there's one more thing that I wanna do before we jump into the tutorial and showing you how to um, pack the opacity the subsurface scattering and the roughness into a single channel and that is i want to introduce you to our new test asset so last week we used this bush uh, but this week we're upgrading a little bit and here is our tree asset that we're going to use for this week's tutorial uh, i'm not that great at making assets myself and so i went on to gumroad and i found this set of tree assets here that are made by Luis Garcia. And this is just a fantastic set of assets. Uh, Luis's tree package comes with more than 100 different models and 16 different species of tree. Uh, so I'll put the link to this in the description if you wanna grab these. I know it says zero dollars here, but I'm sure Luis would really appreciate it if you grab this packet, if you, if you give him a few dollars uh, tip, uh, just to say thank you for his hard work in putting this asset package together. So we're going to be using these tree assets uh, as we go forward and talk more about foliage shaders uh, in the next couple of weeks videos. 
Uh, so today we're using uh, this tree called Maple02. And obviously you're welcome to use any tree that you'd like. If you use a tree that you made yourself, even better. All right, so let's take a look at the shader that we're gonna be working on today. As you can see, this shader is exactly the same as the one for the bush that we worked on last week. And I've even added the two-sided sign multiplied by the normals. So here are our normals, here's our diffuse texture, and here's the texture that I painted uh, for the leaf wiggle. Now you can see that it is missing one thing. It's missing the subsurface scattering mask that we had for the bush. Uh, and so let's switch over to Photoshop. We need to create our subsurface scattering mask, our opacity mask, and our roughness mask, and then combine them all together. All right, so here we are in Photoshop, and we'll go through these one at a time. So first over here on the left, we have the mask that we use for leaf wiggle. And just briefly, I wanna show you, here is the starting mask that uh, the texture came with for opacity. And I just pulled it in to use as reference. And then for each of these individual leaves, I just used the lasso tool and circled each leaf and then filled it in with these blobs of red, green, or blue. And then I uh, filled this second layer here with black so that I just got uh, red, green, or blue blobs. Now the nice thing about this texture is you can use a super low resolution version. So my original here that I created is 512. But in the engine, I actually skip a couple of the MIP levels uh, and just use a 64 mask, and that's plenty. All right, so let's jump in and talk about how to pack these textures together. Here is the original opacity that came with the map. And I need a map that masks off uh, just the leaves so that I can do the subsurface scattering. And I also need another mask to use for roughness. So I've created each of those here and I'll go through how I created these. For this first one, this is the translucency mask or for subsurface scattering. And basically I just made a copy of this one and then I went through with a black brush and painted out all of the parts that are not translucent. So basically just all the branches and stems, I just painted those out, which gave me this mask that is only the leaves. All right, and then I was able to make this roughness mask and I'll walk through how that works. Um, so this is a grayscale version of the color. So I just copied the color, pasted it in here and desaturated it so that it became gray. And then I pasted in this uh, subsurface scattering map and set it to multiply. So the blend mode is set to multiply. So it just lays right on top of my desaturated color. And then I used a levels adjustment to boost the levels up just a little bit so this is brighter. All right, so these are the three masks that I need and I need to combine them together. So the first thing that I did is I made a copy of my original opacity mask and I applied a levels adjustment to it. So here's my levels adjustment. You can see that I took this out white point and brought it down to a level of about 90. And so that just dims down the whole thing. And then I took my uh, roughness mask here and I just added it right on top. So you can see how this layer is overlaid. So right now, if we zoom in here a little bit, you can see how I have my branches and they're using this, this darkened version with the, the levels. And then the leaves are using this brighter version. Now, the nice thing about that is it separates out the leaves and the branches. So let's take a look at what the uh, histogram looks like for this image. I'm just gonna go into the levels menu so we can take a look. Now, what you see is the leaves are represented by this portion of the histogram and the branches are represented by this portion of the histogram. So this little spike here is basically all of the branches. And then this little spike here over at the end is, is all of the black parts. So what I can do now is I can adjust this texture using math. If I were to take this uh, texture into Unreal and subtract 0.4, then I would move this whole thing down so that this point was now below zero. 
Actually, you know what? It's probably easier for me to explain this if I just show it to you in Unreal using the nodes. So uh, this is the final texture that I created. And then I just pasted this texture into the alpha channel of my diffuse texture right here. So you can see I've got this texture where the leaves are bright and the branches are dim. And we're going to bring this into, un into Unreal. And I'm going to use just a little bit of math to separate these channels out from each other. All right, first I'm going to work on this opacity mask here. Uh, because my branches are kind of a dark gray color, I actually want them to be a little bit brighter. And so I'm just going to add a multiply right here. And I'm going to multiply this by like a value of four uh, just to brighten up this texture. Now it'll get clamped automatically when it gets passed into opacity. So even though it's going above one here, it's going up to four, it's going to get clamped to one. What this does is it just brightens up the branches so that there's no chance that the branches will get clipped out on the bottom end. All right, the next thing that we need is our subsurface scattering mask, and we only want to scatter the leaves. And so uh, I just want to jump over here and show you the texture really quick. So this is our texture, and I'm going to turn off the red, green, and blue channels and just look at the alpha again. So the leaves are this, this dark gray color. I'm sorry, the branches are this dark gray color. And if I want to get rid of them from the mask, I need to subtract a value from this mask that will push the dark gray branch color below zero. And so I'm going to switch back over to my shader and I'm going to take that value and I'm going to subtract, let's just subtract a value of 0.4. 0.4 and I'm going to open up the uh, the preview here so that you can see what's happening. It'll take a minute for it to update. And now that you can see that that's subtracted out, there are no more branches in this image. But the problem with the subtraction is it's also moved my leaves down toward the lower end of the range. And so I need to multiply as well. So I'm going to multiply by two. And this will brighten up the leaves. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to saturate the results. So that's going to get rid of anything less than zero and anything greater than one. Now, it's important that I do this saturate because in the subtraction that I've done here, I've actually pushed the branches values below zero. So there's some negative values in here now. And so when I do my saturate, it will clamp the range to zero and completely get rid of those dark gray branches. Okay, so now I can take the result of this. And so up here, this is what we worked on last week with the subsurface scattering where I added this kind of nice green color and then I'm gonna multiply that by my mask. And I'm gonna open up the preview here so that we can take a look at what the result of this looks like. So now you can see I have this nice kind of bright green mask, and this is what I'm going to use for my subsurface color. All right, at this point, I think we're ready to save and switch over and take a look at what our tree is looking like. All right, this is working really well. So you can see that I have my opacity map, and in that same channel, I've also packed my subsurface scattering or translucent mask. And so I'm getting this nice translucency on my tree leaves that I didn't have before. And I'm able to do that without doing any additional texture samples, uh, which is a really nice benefit for performance. Now, can you see these areas that are really white and shiny? That's because I don't have a roughness texture yet. And so let's add in some roughness. And we can do this using that same data in that same alpha channel of the diffuse without doing anything extra. So I'll switch back to our shader here and I'm going to take the alpha channel and this time I'm going to invert it. And so I'll just do a one minus to, to invert that data. And this is going to make my leaves black and everything else white and black for roughness is probably going to be a little too shiny. In fact, let's, let's go ahead and pipe this in. And I'll show you what I mean. All right, if we zoom in here, 
I might be able to find a spot where it's super shiny. Yeah, so you can see right here the the leaves, the specular on the leaves is basically nuclear. Uh, I don't want it to be this smooth uh, because leaves, well, I guess some, some leaves are kind of waxy and glossy looking, um, but probably not like 100% smooth. So let's switch back over to the shader. And all I need to do to fix this is just add a little bit to my inverted value. So in this case, I'm gonna add a value of 0 0.4. And you're welcome to tweak this value here to make the leaves uh, more or less rough, uh, depending on uh, what kind of foliage you're working on and how smooth you want your leaves to be. Um, but I'm just going to adjust this a little bit. And then we'll switch back over and take a look at the result. All right, so now you can see I've got my roughness a little bit more in a range that's reasonable. If we take a look here, we can come under buffer visualizations and I can switch over to roughness. And you can see that I'm getting uh, some pretty decent values in there for roughness. Of course, my, my branches are 100% rough, but then my leaves are just slightly shinier. And if I switch over to the shader and I adjust this uh, 0.4 value, I can make them shiny or less shiny depending on uh, what I want. Okay, I hope you can see how, how cool this is that we've actually packed roughness and opacity mask and subsurface scattering mask all into uh, one single channel just by separating out where the values fall. So like I said, you know, the branches are this kind of darker color and the leaves are this brighter color. And with just a little bit of math in the shader, we're able to separate those things out and get several different masks all packed into one channel. Pretty cool. And it's giving us some fairly decent looking results. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. There's one more thing I wanna point out. Can you see how uh, when I rotate around this tree, you can sort of make out how it's constructed. If I look right here at these branches, you can see that there's this kind of a Y shape uh, branch structure um, where all of the leaves are on flat planes. So in next week's tutorial, we're going to take a look at a method of hiding the fact that these leaf structures are on flat planes. It's gonna be a really neat method for uh, fading these flat planes out. And we'll also talk a little bit more about normals on foliage. So I hope you come back next week to take a look at that. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, give it a like. If you have any questions, um, be sure to ask in the comments. And we'll see you next week, everybody.